<clears throat> Hello, my name is Clarence Neese. I'm the vice president and co-founder of Orbis Incorporated. Today, I'm here to talk about our involvement with the NSF Convergence Accelerator Program through our team, iCoast. And I'm also take a few seconds to go into depth how some of the components work. Just a quick overview on Orbis. We are a technology firm creating and offering custom software as a service solutions to the land asset and natural resource management industry. We specialize in areas of service, including land transaction due diligence, recreational lease management, cloud and data solutions, and technology consulting. And as you may know, iCoast is the name of our team, which stands for Inclusion Through Convergence of Ocean and Social Technology. We are honored to be part of this project and proud that our contributions will help create real solutions to address and solve inequalities in the blue economy. Orbis is working with the iCoast team in a few different capacities. As you can see here, we are focusing on inclusive research on underserved communities across the United States. Taking that research and creating comprehensive data models that help provide visual guidance, allowing us to better examine the current landscape of properties. And in these cases, when we talk about environments, we're talking about social economical environments and potential barriers that may have come along with them. Just like our work in the outdoor recreation space, we also apply the modeling to predict property values and assess suitability for different property uses. And lastly, we are helping support these project initiatives with strategic marketing standpoint. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself, what does this all mean? Let's take a look at some examples. You can see this model is formulated to assess the social vulnerability of our test area in Michigan. Keep in mind the research we're gathering and focusing on includes participation of diverse racial, <clears throat> ethnic, and social economic backgrounds. So it is more comprehensive and accurate representation of the problem versus existing research. <clears throat> After the research is collected, we input it into our modeling system. And as you can see, the output is a map that is data heavy, but easy to understand. Our GIS modeling uses spatial modeling techniques and geographic information system, GIS analysis software. Data within spatial units, such as counties within a state are aggregated using source sources, excuse me, such as the US Census and National Environmental Public and Health Tracking Network, the American Community Survey, and others to build layers of information that correspond to the people vulnerability drivers within a spatial unit. Data focused on people may include items such as population density or county level health rankings. Data focused on vulnerability drivers may include items such as population percent, racial and ethnic minorities, social association rate, and, and, and or the presence of toxic substance and disease. Each attribute category is then weighed according to the importance for overall social vulnerability as measured by research literature, expert evaluation, and scholarly input materials. Those weights allow calculations of suitability scores by comparing criteria and attributes across all state across all sites and returning an overall score of a relative scale of zero to one with zero representing no social vulnerability and one representing absolute vulnerability. So what does all this model tell us? It tells us that the darker shaded areas are the more vulnerable to the factors we just mentioned. The same concept applies to this next model, which is focused on marine recreational suitability. Similar to the previous model, the suitability model for marine recreation uses spatial modeling techniques and geographic information systems, GIS analysis software. The source for this one changes slightly to include the US Census, the North American Industry Classification System, NAICS, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Data focused on amenities include items such as percent of water coastline or recreational amenities densities, such as parks, playgrounds, or public access locations. Each attribute category is then weighed according to the importance for marine recreational suitability as measured by research literature, expert evaluation, and scholarly input materials. 
So this is just a small glimpse into how Orbis's data modeling is being applied to the iCoast project. For more information, visit our team's website at iCoastProject.com.